Si Dr. Hossi Anso Ramohu pa who informs Central in to the issue of independent power producers will certainly be also engaging with uh, other ministers in this uh, state visit of uh, the, minister, the, the president of uh, Portugal and President Cyril Ramaphosa.
Someone needs to speak to Rosalie. She can't be seen. Oh, no! 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 Oh,
Okay.
Attention. Podium group. Quick march.
thousand you can see the president of Kenya and the post of second president of Kenya to deputy president Paul Mashakilo, the chief minister of international relations and cooperation in Nairobi, and the meeting of the president of the Zone Nairobi Pando will be embarking on that all important visit to Russia and Ukraine. He's in fact living it as part of the advance in the group. The amount of stuff trade and industry in the country is getting all those investments foreign direct investments into the country it is in Qatar, very central to President Kenya Maputo's economic drive to get that, that over 2.3 trillion land into the African economy in order to stimulate the economy and to create jobs. Well, sir, They have gone coincidentally, coincidentally, and uh, and many really say they cause a very monumental harm in terms of making sure that the grid doesn't collapse from this. Indeed, there is there is a man who has trusted making sure that the grid does not collapse. But on that issue of independent power producers, as you can also see, they are still engaging with Dr. Fatu and to Ramaphosa, the Minister of Electricity, and uh, Dr. Tumbile Baleni, the Director General in the Presidency, on the issue of renewable energy. The powers that have been given to the minister, he is tasked with uh, getting that much needed energy of renewable energy onto the grid, but the procurement processes will be left with the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy, where it comes in. And that's just the importance of Dr. Fatu and Dora Mokofa doing it here, and him and being the role player in independent power producers, which is renewable energy. Mm. It's been such a major headache for the government to quiet up and get it right. It's not because of any of that. They did their planning on it. It was rolling time. Energy driver was very important. Why did they come to the world this way? So I think it's time to really go to the world.
Yeah, very few. But, uh, but they still, they still have quite a number. Yes. They still have a
Good relations between states always need to be underpinned by continuous mutual visits. The 10th of June is Portugal Day, and it is no doubt a great honor for South Africa's Portuguese community that you are here to celebrate this occasion with them. You were already telling me about some of the joy and the pleasure that many of them have expressed in some parts of our country, Cape Town and so on, and you are now going to see others in Johannesburg and here in Pretoria. South Africa is home to the world's third largest community in the Portuguese diaspora. The Portuguese community's culture, traditions, customs and food are very much a part of our national life. A number of us never go past a Portuguese food restaurant without looking for a second time or just catching the whiff of the wonderful food that is offered in those eating places. One of South Africa's greatest strengths is that we are united in our diversity. The Portuguese community contributes much to that co strength as well as to that diversity. We congratulate you, your delegation, and the South African Portuguese community in advance as you celebrate Portugal Day. The relationship between Portugal and Southern Africa stretches several centuries and has evolved into a partnership of cooperation and solidarity. Our bilateral relationship is one of strategic importance to South Africa. We collaborate in several sectors, such as education, science and technology, trade, investment, as well as in defense. Our meeting today is an opportunity to deepen our collaboration in another important field, namely energy. Portugal is one of the countries in Europe that has been pioneering the deploying, deployment of renewable energy. As we confront our own energy challenges, we are keen to discuss best practice, draw a number of good lessons from how you have gone about becoming energy secure, how we can learn from the technology that you have utilized and have technology transfer, and also investment potential in our energy sector. In recent years, we have come to appreciate how interconnected the global community is and how we need to work together to solve common challenges like climate change, pandemics, and armed conflict. As the countries of the world work to achieve sustainable development goals, we must step up our collaboration to address these challenges. The countries of Africa recently celebrated the 60th anniversary of the founding of the Organization of African Unity, now the African Union. This anniversary comes at a time when the cause of continental economic integration is finding expression in the African continental free trade area. This free trade area will create a single continental market with a population of some 1.3 billion people, and a combined GDP of approximately $3.4 trillion. Not only will it boost intra-African trade, but it will also boost investment, and it will create opportunities for greater trade investment between Africa and 
other parts of the world. So a great opportunity beckons and waiting for us to work together to take up those great opportunities. It is therefore encouraging at this time to receive visits from countries such as Portugal that are committed to the cause of Africa's development and prosperity. Our discussions today, we will also take note of the multilateral matters of mutual importance. You and I have spent the past few minutes in our tete a tete talking about some of these important global matters. The ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine has had a global impact. As South Africa, we believe that negotiation and dialogue can indeed play an important role in resolving conflicts. We know this from our own experience in relation to our transition to democracy. We continue to advocate the, for rules-based multilateralism that should be at the center of global efforts to address common challenges. It has always been our view that peace and security create more space and favorable conditions for development and advancing mutual prosperity for the peoples of the world. I welcome you, President, once more to South Africa and look forward to our engagement during these official talks. I now invite you, Mr. President, to make your own remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa. Thank you for your invitation, your very kind and warm invitation. We know how warm are South Africans, and you know how warm are the Portuguese, because we have here a huge and very, very proactive Portuguese community in every field of your economy and society. I was yesterday with hundreds of Portuguese in Cape Town. 700. 700, yes, you know everything. Uh, I'll be meeting tomorrow together with the Prime Minister. Arriving this evening, the Portuguese community in uh, Johannesburg. And then coming back to Pretoria. It's a sign of friendship long-lasting friendship between the two people, the two states, with a community that is well integrated, working for the wealthiness of the, this great power, as you are, not just a regional African power, but a global power. It is very meaningful for us to have a cooperation, both bilateral and multilateral, that has been deepening its roots in the last decades. As you stressed, this is the first visit of a Portuguese president to South Africa in the last 29 years. And it's a unique opportunity for such a cooperation. Multilateral, as you mentioned, in the United Nations, in other international organizations, fighting for multilateralism at a time where it is very difficult to meet this aim, but also for peace, for freedom, for human rights, for international law, and addressing so many issues. You mentioned one of them, and I would like to, to thank your role in this African Peace Initiative concerning Ukraine, involving other heads of state, African heads of state, but knowing how important is your specific role, trying to meet conditions for a future that would really respect international law.
the Charter of the United Nations. And at the same time, listen to the two parties and telling them what is the African view of a war that is not just an European war. It is a global war involving directly or indirectly powers of the world. You know that Portugal condemned the invasion of Ukraine by Russian Federation. Portugal belongs to NATO and to the European Union. And at the same time, we follow that path, but wanting to show that multilateralism is not dead in the present and in the future. And then we have our bilateral cooperation. You spoke of uh, the renewables that are really being a success. In Portugal, we started first, and it was worthwhile. The same with the digital. I do invite you to join the Web Summit with a larger South African delegation. Mm -hmm. The same with science, technology. And of course, we have the example of defense. We'll be signing today a very important agreement on defense, together with science and technology. But also, our bilateral cooperation should deepen in uh, fields like uh, education, tourism, investment. And this will be, a, a, as I said, a unique opportunity at the bilateral level, both for Portugal and our connection to South Africa, but to, for the European Union. We do share your wish of strengthening the ties with the European Union. And we know that sometimes on some subjects there are difficulties in, uh, in the implementation of uh, European rules. <laughs> different, in different countries. We know we are studying it on some of your exports. We know you are studying it about some of our exports our Portuguese and our European. And then, of course, coming to what really matters, I would also like to invite you to go to Portugal. I do suggest one of two months that are really very pleasant in Portugal, either March or April. March is the beginning of uh, the, a new season, springtime in, in Portugal. And we would very much like to have you there. It, it would be the first visit of a South African president, democratic South African president to Portugal. I'm sure that our community would be very happy, as they would be in case of uh, having your presence once you told me you would consider <laughs> in their meeting. Yes. But uh, mostly Portugal would very much like to have you in a year as uh, next one. We are celebrating the fifth anniversary of um, the 50 years uh, of the revolution of uh, 25th of uh, 1974, 74, 74. That was the beginning of a long procedure. And one of the pieces of this procedure was later on, democratic Portugal and democratic South Africa. Yes. Cooperating, working together wanting Portugal to have a larger South African community at home, 
but knowing that meanwhile you have here a so important Portugal that we decide to celebrate our national day starting in South Africa. Because the national day is June the 10th. So we started in South Africa June the 5th. We will celebrate June the 6th. Important day for you because the celebration of the abolishment of the capital uh, uh, in here in a penalty here in uh, in uh, South Africa in 95, mm, yes. 95. Yes. Today, the, June the 6th, we shall go on celebrating mm -hmm. today, tomorrow, till June the 8th. This shows and it's the first time we do it before celebrating at home. Mm -hmm. Usually we start celebrating at home and then we are celebrating with a community throughout the world mm -hmm. in every continent. Really Excellency, and I may call you friend, yes. Yes. I think it's as uh, once when I was young I saw on a movie it is the restart of a long-lasting friendship. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, President. You may want to know that the event that took place in your country, your revolution, as it happened there in 1974, that had other consequences in this region. And personally for me, because it was your revolution that led to me being arrested by the apartheid rulers. <laughs> As uh, people celebrated the freedom of Mozambique, so they decided to arrest me. So. We are linked, you and I. <laughs> Thank you so much, President D'Souza. This is the time when uh, our friends over there in the media uh, always tell me that they'd like to have a, go and have a siesta and uh, go and rest a little bit because they've been working since morning. Uh, so we will allow them the opportunity to go and have their siesta and we will see them later. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, please. President of South Africa and the President of Portugal, Sir Roman Posa and Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa, just addressing the media there, uh, talking about their shared connections and
Yeah, come star. Spewe, can you hear me? How is the testing now? Spewe, Spewe, one, two, one, two, one, two. Testing English, channel one. Testing English, channel one. Ministers, senior government officials, ladies and gentlemen, and members of the media, we will now commence with our official proceedings of the signing ceremony. The two principals will, will witness the signing of one agreement, the agreement between the government of the Republic of South Africa and the Portuguese Republic on defense cooperation. The agreement from our side will be signed by Minister Pando, and from the Portuguese side will be signed by Minister Carreras, ministers. You may exchange the
Thank you very much, ministers. Thank you very much. We've come to the end of the ceremony. I'll now hand over to Mr. Makwenya. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Your Excellencies, President Ramaphosa, President De Sousa. We will now commence with our brief media engagement. Uh, we will start with President Ramaphosa delivering his opening remarks to be followed by President De Sousa. We will then proceed to take two questions from the South African contingent of the media as well as two questions uh, from the Portuguese um, media group. Mr. President, you may take the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Magrenya. Your Excellency President, Excuse the President Portugal, Honorable Ministers are here and we have also accompanied Honorable President and members of uh, the Portuguese delegation which is also composed of members of Parliament. I'd like to first welcome President D'Souza to South Africa. This is the first visit in 29 years since the dawn of democracy. And we are truly honored and also humbled by your presence here, President. It gives us a great deal of joy that you've chosen to come to South Africa, particularly as during this period you celebrate Portugal Day in our country and this being your first visit to South Africa, we do hope that coming to celebrate Portugal Day and spending time with uh, Portuguese citizens who are in the diaspora here in South Africa will lead to a lasting impression of our country. South Africa's Portuguese community is an integral part of the various and diverse cultures that enrich South Africa's national life and has played an important role in the development of our country. As we have Portuguese in a number of endeavors of life in our country, in the arts, in business, in academia, in science, and they play a very critical role. We are enriched by this community's contribution in a number of these areas. South Africa and Portugal have a strong bilateral relationship that spans many, many decades. And we are hoping that through this visit, this very close and warm friendship between our two countries will be strengthened. Our discussions today focus on opportunities that are of mutual benefit to both countries and touched on areas of defense, as you saw the agreement that we have just signed, which is going to broaden and deepen our cooperation in defense matters. We also touched on matters of science, innovation, education, and energy. And we are very impressed to hear how Portugal has been able to achieve energy security largely by utilizing various other forms of energy sources, particularly the renewable ones. Portugal is one of the leaders in Europe in the deployment of renewable energy, and we discussed opportunities for sharing best practice, for sharing investment, <coughs> technology transfer, and skills development. 
we are keen to see higher levels of trade and investment between Portugal and South Africa across a whole number of sectors. The agreement on defense cooperation that we saw being signed this morning following the official talks is expected to provide a legal framework for closer cooperation in this area of relationship. But that agreement will also be utilized to enhance other areas where we hope to settle down to talks as well as to negotiate memoirs of understanding and real agreements. We also had an opportunity to discuss issues of regional and international importance, including the conflict between Russia and the Ukraine, and discussed our take on this, particularly in relation to how South Africa is pursuing an approach that says this conflict, like any other conflict, needs to be negotiated so that the belligerent parties can find solutions. We also discussed the important role that South Africa plays on our continent, particularly in the light of the African continent of the area, which we see this as bringing great benefit for those who would invest in our economy as Africa opens up the market this treaty of 1.3 billion people. In conclusion, I wish President D'Souza and his delegation all the best for the remainder of their visit. I know that they'll be meeting quite a number of their compatriots who are, as I said, contributing quite a great deal in the growth of South Africa. So thank you very much for coming, President. I really welcome you here again. Thank you. Thank you, President. Sua Excelência, o Presidente Ramaphosa. Excellencies, uh, President Ramaphosa. President da África do Sul. The President of South Africa. Que é, além de uma potência regional africana. Other than being a regional power in Africa, but it's also a world power. I thank you for the invitation to come to this great country. And, and this is happens in a point whereby Portugal is celebrating its national day. So we start the celebrations here in South Africa. We started in Cape Town yesterday, and tomorrow we'll be in Joburg and in Pretoria with the Portuguese communities. I would like to thank the warm welcome and the frankliness, the way we addressed our issues. First, we did it together, and then with the delegations with regards to other themes regarding our people and our countries. Naturally, that coming here to celebrate uh, uh, Portuguese Day, Portugal Day, I wouldn't leave aside in thanking South Africa for having welcomed us here, taking into account that we is the third largest co Portuguese community in the world that lives here in South Africa. This community started living in South Africa and working here in, at the end of the 19th century. Now we go through fourth or fifth generations that have been here. They first worked in the mines and then fisheries. And today the Portuguese community is present in every aspect of the South African economy and society. And I thank for the words that you had for our, our community that contributes for the greatness and justice in South Africa with its diversity, cultural diversity, 
bem integrada and that it's well integrated e quer continuar a viver and aqui, that wants to continue to live in South Africa and in peace and security e não apenas, and also have a future not only a past but a future too entre os nossos dois estados and between our states the relations are frankly in order and on bilateral basis as well as on multilateral basis. And on the multilateral plan, we collaborate with the United Nations in, the, in many other organizations, international organizations. Portugal it, it plays a big role in all communities within the European community and the other African communities. And the, European, the African role is very much important, but we also collaborate in defense as well as on the, on the chart of the United Nations, human rights, democracy and liberty as well as peace, as well as the international security. And for that, it's a very great step that we have taken today in signing agreements on defense because it covers matters that are so diverse as well as those that that not only address uh, uh, defense but science, technology as well as peace missions and the geography as well as the cartography and the hydrography as well as the maritime security and then military security as well as the defense industry, we have to admit that it's transversal and it's ambitious and it's also tend to the future. Like you said, Your Excellency, the objective is in the coming months we have to get further in, do, in the domains of the science and technology in general, the economy, energy, where Portugal is uh, very much advanced in uh, renewable energy and South, and South Africa has experience in the domain of classic energy. On the digital side, tourism investment in commerce and then there we spoke about the commerce, the, the commerce between South Africa and Portugal as well as the European Union and South Africa and the challenges that we spoke, common challenges with regards to the limits in the terms of import and export. We also spoke about education, cooperation between universities and other institutions of knowledge and learning. So we spoke about the future. And since future does not end today, a new cycle begins today. And in this future, we have the visit of our of President Ramaphosa to Portugal. I've invited His Excellency to visit Portugal in March of 2024. Occasion. It's very much significative, is of, 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 of significance because we will be celebrating 50 years or five, de five decades of liberty and democracy in Portugal. They are all linked. They are linked of uh, uh, this event is linked to the independence of all countries that are brothers to Portugal that speak Portuguese, and also on the fight against apartheid in South Africa. And this means that this visit that had a dimension linked to the Portugal Day and another dimension linked to the bilateral relation and multilateral relation between the two countries will be the beginning of a new phase. Esta phase começa numa ocasião em que o mundo this phase starts on an occasion when the world is actually suffering the consequences, namely the war in Ukraine. It's not just a European war, it's a global war. So it's got important consequences in all continents. Portugal Portugal has its own position of which everybody knows. 
and it's an ally to the European Union as well as the NATO, and they condemn the invasion and support the people of Ukraine. And I would like to congratulate South Africa for its role and President Ramaphosa in the African Peace Mission, which will, with immediate effect almost, to the theater of war with the objective to contribute and give vision, af give an African vision to what all we desire, that there should be peace, security, that should be European and also should be a global, and to respect the international principles and the values of uh, territorial integrity, and that will help in ending these negative effects and economic effects, as well as social, that has penalized all continents in the universe. I would like to end by thanking Your Excellencies to uh, thanking for this uh, friendly invitation that is frank, that permits me to confirm that why the reason why the, South, the Portuguese community likes to be in South Africa. And they believe that they are also in another house. They have the Portuguese house and also they have their home in South Africa. So in this sense, speaking on behalf of all Portuguese people, I'm very much grateful for the hosting of the Portuguese community in South Africa. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. Muito we obrigado, will now Excelências. open the floor to questions as Sim, já, per their agreed format with media colleagues. And we'll give the first question to Carlos. Carlos, do you have the mic? Thank you very much. Uh, President uh, Ramaphosa, uh, President uh, Marcel Rebelo de Sousa, um, you said that you have signed uh, an agreement in defense. Uh, I would like to ask to both of you, uh, why at, did you sign this agreement today uh, in the context of uh, um, the current uh, uh, world uh, uh, geopolitical affairs with regards to Ukraine? So why are you signing a defense agreement with uh, a country that is no aligned and a country that is a member of, uh, of NATO? Uh, particularly just before uh, President Ramaphosa heads to uh, Moscow and Kiev on an uh, African peace mission. Uh, what is, we'd like to know what is behind this, uh, this, uh, this defense agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Shall I start? You came all the way. Yes, Fine. well, so I commence well. Para dizer que o mundo Sendo muito importante a guerra na Ucrânia, o mundo e o não acabam como não começaram com a guerra da Ucrânia. The things do not end now. It's not that because they began with Ukraine, but it is important and it's evident that there are other scenarios that demand our intervention so that we can keep the peace. And the scenarios that we have to be get, we have to get involved. So this is in the case with the cooperation between Portugal and our brothers in Mozambique. And currently, the cooperation between Mozambique and Portugal is it's mainly to to guarantee the uh, territorial sovereignty as well security that is being that is happening now in Mozambique with regards to terrorist attacks South Africa has played a big role in the initiative African initiative much more open 
Other than that, we are very much worried and concerned with regards to peace, peacekeeping and security in every continent, namely in the African continent, where Portugal, within the United Nations, has peacekeeping force in other countries, such as the Central African Republic as well as Mali. And other than that, there is a cooperation in the domain of science and technology with regards to maritime knowledge and the future of the oceans and the security of the oceans, which is closer. So, I had the opportunity to say that that we, this accord touches many aspects. It's not specifically linked to one situation, but it's got, it has to do with the real, realities that we live today. And it has all the logic that we have to celebrate between the two countries. And independently of belonging, one belonging to another organization, to OAU, another belonging to the EU, and having their two alignments, their alignments or not alignment, but they are multilateralists, and they also defend the role of the United Nations, and they defend the necessity to work for peace and security in the world. <coughs> Thank you, President. I think everyone, uh, on hearing the news that two countries are signing an agreement on defense should be really delighted that uh, for starters it means that you have two countries that are signing that we want to cooperate in defense meaning that we'll never be at war with each other that's point number one and number two we want to learn from each other we're both naval powers and uh, there's a lot that we can learn from each other around the defense uh, of our, our borders, the maritime and all that. And we also two countries that happen to get involved in peace missions and uh, being able to cooperate at defense level <coughs> uh, through an agreement also enhances that. Both of us are involved in helping Mozambique to ward off the insurgents in the north and there's a lot that we have to share in common, uh, us as part of SADC, and uh, obviously Portugal as part of uh, the EU, but we do find ways of cooperating at a bilateral level. And uh, much as there is a conflict that is raging uh, in another part of the world, it does not mean that we should be deterred from entering into agreements uh, that will bring us closer and cooperate much more effectively. Uh, issues of technology that we have to share uh, and talk about and this agreement is, is a really great signal to both countries and to our peoples that uh, South Africa and Portugal are two countries that cooperate and uh, want to cooperate at a number of different levels, not only in trade and politics and investment, but in a number of other more complicated areas. So you should be applauding uh, and celebrating that these two countries are cooperating at defense level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. Second question goes to Sam Gallo. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, afternoon to both President Sasso and President Ramaphosa. President Ramaphosa, on the issue of the six African heads of state, you had a meeting yesterday, virtually. Just are you able to enlighten South Africans and the African continent and the world at large on what was the basis of the discussions that took place yesterday between the six of you as the presidents? And when exactly will you be heading to Russia and to Ukraine. Secondly, Mr. President, on President Vladimir Putin, the Secretary General of your own organization, Mr. Figila Mbalula, recently uttered that Russia, the Kremlin, the Kremlin and the Russian Federation should not feel belittled 
if the invite for him to attend BRICS is withdrawn? Are you looking at other alternatives of hosting the BRICS summit virtually or taking it to Beijing, as I can see that he's currently in Beijing at this point in time? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. The discussions that took place amongst a number of heads of state on the continent have been discussions that have been going on for quite a long time. Uh, these African heads of states have been involved in discussing the initiative of peacemaking over a number of months. Yesterday we met and confirmed that we now are at a stage where we are going to visit Kyiv and Moscow. And our mission is a peace mission, really, and we want to dub it as a uh, road to peace. Uh, the first thing that we discussed amongst ourselves is that we want to listen to both sides. They need to outline to us uh, their own perspective on the war, as well as what are their minimum requirements for bringing the conflict to an end. So clearly they will explain where they are themselves, and we will be there to listen. Because it's important uh, when you make an intervention for peacemaking that you should listen where the parties are coming from and where they are, and also where they want to go. And having done so, we will be able to give our own perspective uh, as Africans uh, in terms of how we see this war having an impact uh, on Africa in relation to uh, food prices and grain prices and fuel, as well as the impact it is having on Europe and the rest of the world because it has become a rather global type of conflict. And it is in that context that we will say we desire and everyone desires that uh, there should be peace. Uh, and, and this being our peace mission, we will essentially be suing for peace and seeking to get a commitment on both sides that they too uh, should seek for peace to end this conflict through peaceful means. And our position is that every conflict uh, is often ended through discussions and negotiations unless there's an outright defeat, and which we do not see here. So therefore, we see one option and one alternative, which is the parties sitting down to peaceful negotiations. Both of them say to us, yes, we're ready to negotiate, and uh, we've been talking, but we would like to reiterate that conflicts of this nature that are having such an overriding impact on the lives of people should be negotiated, people should sit down, and they should lay out precisely what they see as an end game. Where is this all going to end? And it is in that context that we will be able to have discussions. So that is what we were discussing amongst ourselves, and that is what we will be going to engage the two presidents on. As regards what the Secretary General said, maybe you should go and ask him, uh, the last time one of you tricked me. <laughs> Uh, the issue of President Putin attending the summit, the BRICS summit, as I've said, is being discussed in the light of the International Criminal Court having issued a warrant uh, for his arrest. So we, as South Africa being the host, obviously we have to discuss this and come up with uh, a clear position. Uh, much of what you hear being said around it's really just talk. It's real talk. As I said at one press conference, in the end, you will hear from me. I will be the one 
who will say, this is what is going to happen. You point to your watch, in politics, in politics time is something that is <laughs> lengthened quite often. So you will hear from me, my good friend, and we will be able to announce precisely what is going to happen with regard to the BRICS summit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, the next question will go to Anna. Please introduce yourself and the okay. publication you represent. Thank you. Okay, thank you. My name is Anisabel Costa. I'm a journalist from the public radio in Portugal, Antena 1. I would like to return to the invitation that our president have made you today, uh, several times <laughs> in public, no pressure. <laughs> um, Mr. President uh, Ramaphosa, uh, do you still thinking about the invitation of coming to Portugal next year, or uh, you have already accepted this invitation? And uh, to my president, if you if you allow me, I will talk in Portuguese. <laughs> Sr. Presidente, uh, disse que gostaria que uh, o Presidente Sul-Africano estivesse em Portugal em março ou abril. Uh, you said the President of South Africa will be in, 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 in Portugal in, in, in March to commemorate in Portugal the 50 years of the revolution. A minha resposta é muito simples. My answer is very simple. The, the invitation will be for March, but for a simple reason. The President Ramaphosa will be having other activities at that time, intense activities, because in the coming two months, March will be the best time for him to come to Portugal, for the, to come and visit Portugal. In, and I was informed today that President Ramaphosa that he was also affected collaterally by what happened in 1974 on the 25th of April because he was celebrating for the coming of the independence of the Portuguese-speaking countries, namely Mozambique, when he was arrested. So he was arrested by the apartheid regime for celebrating the coming of the independence of Mozambique while we were celebrating the liberty and democracy after the revolution of the 25th of April. Thank you very much. Uh, President D'Souza is very persuasive, if you did not know. Uh, he's m extended the invitation, and as you correctly say, f a few times. Uh, he's mentioned it a few times ever since he's been here, even in our talks and even in our tete-a-tete. -tete. So I've had no choice but to accept uh, that finally, I will go. Finally, <laughs> I will go to Portugal. All obviously we need to do is to finalize the date, my diary and all that, and I'd love to go for a whole host of reasons. Uh, and of course, maybe to go and celebrate my, my own freedom, because uh, having been arrested for what happened in your country, I'll go there and say, well, I'm now free. Uh, and also to go and, uh, uh, and, and, and celebrate. Uh, the changes, the revolution that happened there, but also that uh, we would be the very first South African president to visit Portugal. So that in itself uh, is an important one. And also to seal the relationship that we have between the two countries. So there are many reasons why we would want to go, but I, will, I have accepted. Thank you. And the last question to wrap us up goes to Amanda Koza. Good afternoon to the President. Um, Mr. President, um, the DA... Oh, so sorry. Um, my name is Amanda Koza. I am a presidency correspondent for the Sunday Times newspaper in South Africa. Um, to our President, Mr. Ramaphosa, the DA has gone to court and um, Musima Emani's BUSA organization wants the government to withdraw uh, 
uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin's invitation. What is your response to this? I'm also aware that the interministerial committee that you set up on the matter sat yesterday. Have you been briefed on how the meeting went or you will wait for the Deputy President to brief Cabinet on Wednesday? Thank you. Yes, I've noted that some people have gone to court, but in the end, matters of conducting foreign policy and uh, matters of inviting whoever, like we invited President D'Souza, is a function of the executive. Uh, it's not a function of other people outside of the executive. So it is the government, it is the president, who invites other heads of states. That function is not devolved to any other person. The IMC met yesterday. Obviously, they're still finalizing their minutes and their report. And the report will be presented uh, to the appropriate structure, me first, and thereafter it will uh, either go to cabinet tomorrow or day after tomorrow or, or on another day. Yes, it is tomorrow, on another day as well. So let's wait for the normal course of things uh, before spreading uh, rumors and untruths. Uh, what I can guarantee is that uh, this matter uh, will be well handled and uh, I will make the announcement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. We've now come to the end of this media briefing. Your Excellencies, you may take leave of us. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>